Love and a Bit of Disorder by Elaine Canyon Read by the Author Part 1 Cynthia Noise from the barn this early in the morning always meant the workday would not be a pleasant one. Cynthia Latham stared at the old barn. Most mornings it was a quiet place, but currently muffled whinnying reached her ears. What had woken them up so early? She moved up the path to the door, wondering if the Griffins and Pegasuses were arguing. They always ended up eating out of each other's troughs, and if they woke up early, they'd likely be hungry enough to cause problems. Old Grant kept them in slapdash pens as opposed to full stalls. He'd inherited the animals and had no idea what to do with them. That was how Cynthia ended up here six months ago. Grant needed someone who knew how to care for his new animals, and Cynthia needed out of her hometown as quickly as possible. A yell joined the whinnying, followed by crashing and squawking, creating a cacophony. Panicked, Cynthia ran the last few steps to the door and yanked it open, knocking her bag from her shoulder to her elbow. Not a single pen still stood. Griffins and pegasuses flew around the tall ceiling in panic, crashing against the walls and into each other. Cynthia! Cynthia turned to the voice and groaned. Andrew Spurgle, the new stable hand, clung to the neck of a pegasus 15 feet in the air. The pegasus, Henry by the looks of it, was doing everything in his power to throw Andrew off. Andrew, what did you do? Cynthia yelled. He couldn't respond as Henry turned in a tight circle, almost throwing Andrew to the ground. Her heart stopped for a moment before Andrew righted himself on Henry's back. I can explain! He cut off with a yelp as Henry flew in a loop, thankfully not throwing Andrew down to the rubble below. For a heartbeat, Cynthia considered ducking back out of the barn and pretending she hadn't shown up to work. Andrew trailed chaos around with him like a security blanket. Cynthia had initially found it endearing, but she wasn't sure she wanted to deal with it today. An ear-piercing screech cut through her thoughts. Sandy! Cynthia scrambled over down boards to her favorite griffin's pen. Well, where it would be if the pens were still standing. She skidded to a stop next to Sandy, dropping to her knees as her heart skipped a beat and her bag fell to the ground beside her. The big griffin thrashed beneath the debris, her head sticking out among several broken boards, one wing trapped between two boards still connected to a down post. Mud splattered the golden brown feathers of her face, likely from one of the water troughs spilling during the chaos. Of all the griffins to get caught in the debris, why did it have to be Sandy? Cynthia was so close to bringing her home. One more month, and she'd have enough to buy her. If Andrew was the reason she lost out on Sandy, Cynthia might demand Grant fire him, no matter how much she liked the man. Sandy screeched and struggled again, the debris shifting, but not enough to free her massive wing. Cynthia brushed the mud from Sandy's face, rubbing soothing circles along her feathers, trying to calm herself as much as the griffin. It's all right, Curl. I'm here. I'll get you out. She moved the broken boards before gripping the splintering wooden plank that trapped the griffin's wing, and was immediately knocked flat on her back by a falling stable hand. Cynthia swore, shoving Andrew off of her as she rubbed at where a board had jabbed into her shoulder. Sorry! He jumped up, his legs twisting between the boards she'd moved, before falling back onto the dirt, crying out in pain. Cynthia ignored the concern rising in her chest. Sandy might be hurt, and couldn't be healed in the same way as Andrew. Besides, if Cynthia had learned anything in the last month of Andrew working here, this debacle was his doing. Hold on, I'll help you in a minute. She turned from him and gripped the wooden plank again, heaving as she slowly lifted it high enough for Sandy to free her wing. Sandy stood and stretched her long wings out, moving them in a circular motion. Then she took to the air. The griffin flew a tight loop around the ceiling, knocking against another griffin, before landing near an overturned grain trough with a proud shake of her head. 
Cynthia took a moment to enjoy the relief that washed over her before looking back to the chaos. Time to heal Andrew. Cynthia turned to where he sat on the ground. Andrew held his ankle close against him, sucking in air through his clenched teeth. Let's see it. Cynthia found her bag, praying she had everything to ask Mother Land to fix his ankle. Of the three sisters, creators of the world and all its creatures, Cynthia appreciated she'd been born a human, a child of the land. Mother Land loved all her children, including Andrew, a quiet voice reminded her. And with the right training, any human could call on Mother Land for a variety of things. Cynthia smiled as she undid the latch. Mother Land wasn't the only one who saw things to enjoy in Andrew. Andrew released his ankle, then hissed and pulled it back into him. No, I'll just hold on to it. It'll be all right. We'll get you fixed up. Cynthia threw open her bag and pulled out her candle. But what on earth did you do? Did you try to take Henry for a fly? No. Andrew let go of his ankle and reached for her, only to grab it again with a yelp. I can explain. You see, what happened was I accidentally let Henry out of his pen. He glanced up at the pegasus he'd been hanging from when she walked in, and then snapped his gaze back to her. And I couldn't coax him back in, so I thought I'd get a lead on Mavis since Henry likes to be around Mavis and use her as bait to get him back in the pen. Then Mavis got it in her head we were going outside, and while I tried to get control of her, Henry started in on it, and the next thing I knew the pens were crashing down and all of them were flying, and then I was in the air with Henry, and then you walked in. Andrew gulped in air, and Cynthia forced her smile down with the reminder he could have killed Sandy. Only Andrew could demolish the interior of a barn in less than a minute. He would have gone back in on his own, she sighed. We've talked about this. They are horses. Stop thinking of them that way. Cynthia tore a corner off a letter for her mother. The invitation for her parents to visit in the next few days wouldn't work out if she didn't fix this mess first. She set the torn corner next to the candle. White for bone. Now she needed something red. Here. Andrew pushed his hand into her vision, dropping a mess of squashed berries next to her candle on the ground. They were my breakfast before all this. Cynthia gaped at him. Why didn't you use the berries to coax Henry back into his pen? Why would I do that? Andrew wiped his hand on his pant leg with a grimace before returning it to where his other hand still gripped his ankle. Because Pegasuses love berries. Cynthia couldn't believe he'd had berries all along and hadn't bothered to even try. When Grant told her about hiring Andrew, Cynthia thought it would be fun to teach someone all about caring for griffins and pegasuses, especially considering his experience with horses. The extra help during the day was an added benefit. The last month with Andrew hadn't given her as much help as she'd hoped, but Andrew was good company, even if things had a habit of spiraling out of control around him. Andrew's face blossomed as red as the berries. I didn't know that. He dropped his head to his knee and clenched his jaw. Cynthia's eyes traced the hard line from his jaw into his brown hair, tousled from the chaos, then back to his chin. Maybe Mother Land went out of her way to make him good-looking to help compensate for how he carried havoc in his back pocket. Sandy nudged Cynthia's arm aside, startling her from admiring Andrew's physique and rummaged in the bag. Hurry and eat it before they see you. Cynthia blew her black fringe from her eyes. Sandy started pulling out the stone fruit in Cynthia's bag. Grant didn't approve of the sugar. But Sandy was almost hers. She was counting on the stone fruit to help ease Sandy's transition from Grant's stable. Why do you bring her treats? Andrew looked up from his knee. Let's fix your ankle. Cynthia pulled out her matches and lit the candle, evading Andrew's question. For someone so out of control, she didn't expect him to have noticed that she snuck sandy fruit every morning. She set the candle next to his ankle. Try to stay still so the smoke can get to you. He braced himself against her side, and she ignored how firm his arm was against hers. Cynthia lit the candle, then the scrap of paper, and set it on top of the berries. 
white for bone, red for blood, motherland, we beg thy healing for thy son. The smoke turned pure white as it burned through the paper. Tendrils of smoke circled Andrew's ankle. The wet berries caught fire as quickly as dry grass, sending red smoke to join the white. Andrew yelled in pain, tipping into the ground away from her. Cynthia rushed to pull him back up against her side, worried his leg would leave the healing smoke. It'll be over in a moment. She tried to prop him up and rest his head on her shoulder, but Andrew was stouter than she expected. Fighting against his weight, she settled with him half propped against her side and his head resting against her chest. He smelled of the barn, but the faintest scent of a forest walk pushed through. Did he always smell this good? His cold sweat dampened her shirt, and she realized she should probably try again to prop him up against her shoulder, rather than letting him keep his face in her chest. She shifted to move him, but he cried out, and Cynthia froze, afraid to cause more pain. It would be fine. It wasn't like they were involved or anything. She was just supporting a work friend, with a very broken ankle, by letting him rest his face against her chest. And she definitely wasn't affected by his warm breath against her. She needed to focus. He needed help. She was there to provide it. She could do this. Healing often hurts more than breaking does, but it's better than living with the pain. Cynthia hesitated a moment before rubbing her hand against his back. Easy for you to say. He ground out through haggard breaths. There, she wasn't the one Motherland was healing, but she had been before. I was ten. I fell from a tree and broke my arm. When my parents got everything together to heal me, I thought my mama had messed up the prayer and Motherland was breaking my arm more. My papa had to hold me down so that I'd stop moving away from the smoke. Andrew let out a low chuckle cut short by a sharp hiss and a loud pop from his ankle. Cynthia tightened her grip on him as he slumped against her. The white smoke disappeared as the paper turned to ash. The last of the berries still twirled red smoke around his ankle. You're almost there. Just think. Once your ankle is better, you can help me fix all this before Grant checks on us. He barked a laugh, and Cynthia chuckled. Andrew was a chaotic mess of a man but he was a fun, chaotic mess. Broken pens, notwithstanding. The berries were nothing but black ash now, as the last tendrils of red smoke faded into the air and the candle snuffed out. Andrew let out a shuddering sigh, his hot breath wafting across her chest as he turned further into her. Cynthia's face heated. They were far too close. And if Grant walked in and saw Andrew's face pressed against her chest on top of the mess, they'd both likely lose their jobs. Come on. She gave into a secret desire and grabbed his hair, tugging loosely on the damp, silky strands. Was his hair always this soft? Or was it just today? This mess needs to be cleaned up. Andrew's head followed her hand from her chest chasing it the way the barn cats did when Cynthia took the time to pet them. She dropped her hand to the ground and he followed it for a moment before snapping upright. Thank you. Andrew cleared his throat and looked down at his ankle, his face falling with a dejected sigh. And I'm sorry about all this. I'm a mess. Against her better judgment, Cynthia put her hand on his shoulder. You're new. It happens. Andrew shook his head but didn't argue with her. He pushed himself up, hesitating before setting his weight on his healed ankle. Well, at least that went right today. He smiled and offered her his hand. Cynthia let him lift her up, enjoying how his calluses rubbed against her own when he slipped his fingers from hers. More will go right today. You'll see. If it does, it'll be all your fault. Believe me. He looked around the barn. I guess first we need new pens to put them in. Cynthia wished she could pull the dejected look off his face. Scowling didn't suit Andrew, especially when that scowl was likely accompanied with aggravation at himself. As much as he was chaos embodied, Cynthia liked Andrew. 
she could do without the problems that followed him around. And based on his face, he could too. Let's grab tools from the workshop and see if there's any spare wood and nails before Grant finds all this. Not all these boards are usable. She reached for him, hoping to bring his smile back. But Sandy's head intercepted her hand. Cynthia blinked at the annoyance that hit her, then shook it off. Don't worry, girl. Andrew and I will get your bed back together. She scratched beneath Sandy's feathers, eliciting a loud purr. Be good. She kissed Sandy's head and moved to the door. Andrew followed her out into the crisp morning air. Cynthia started to reach for him again, but he stuck both hands deep in his pockets and didn't look at her. He didn't want her comfort. Or, more likely, her pity. Cynthia thought back to how she'd seen Grant and his wife Jane interact with Andrew. They laced pity into everything they said and did regarding Andrew. Earlier that week, she'd overheard Grant telling a neighbor he'd hired Andrew because the man was going to end up without a roof over his head if someone didn't give him a chance. Cynthia understood what Grant meant. If the last month was any indication, Andrew brought chaos into all parts of his life. But he also brought a lot of fun. And his debacles aside, Andrew had a knack for Griffin's. That counted for something in Cynthia's book. She let it be quiet as they walked the well-worn path to Grant's workshop, but as they approached the building, Cynthia couldn't take his silence any longer. I know Pegasuses aren't your thing, but you're good with the Griffins. Have you worked with them before? No, but they're just big cats, and I'm good with cats. I don't think I'd call a griffin a cat. The eagle head and wings are different, sure, but they act like cats. Andrew opened the door for her and followed her into the workshop. You had Sandy purring before we left the barn. They're more like cats than they are birds. I bet I could get one to play with a big ball of yarn. I might pay to see that, Cynthia laughed as they walked up to the workbench. Just please don't do it inside the barn. Andrew rolled his eyes but smiled at her. Another win. Smiling Andrew was much better than grumpy mad at himself Andrew. The morning light from the windows above the workbench gave his hair a rusty look, and Cynthia had to turn away to keep from staring. The pieces of farming equipment around the large building were far less appealing, but much safer to look at. Andrew cleared his throat, and she spun back to face him. Looks like Grant has enough nails. He picked up a bucket from the workbench and gestured to the four still there. His arm swung back to his side and knocked several odds and ends on the workbench to the floor. Andrew stooped to pick them up and dumped half his bucket of nails. Stop! Stop! Cynthia pressed her lips together to keep from laughing. Set the bucket down, and I'll help you get the nails cleaned up. Andrew sighed as he set the bucket of nails down on the worn wooden floor. She grabbed the old broom by the door and pushed all the nails into one pile, while Andrew picked up the assorted items he'd knocked from the workbench. There, now it'll be easier to get the nails cleaned up. She knelt on the floor, scooping up handfuls of nails and dropping them into the bucket, Andrew following along after her. See? It's like it never happened. Cynthia smiled at him, but Andrew's returning grin looked forced. Like I said, anything good today is your fault. His eyes bore into hers, and Cynthia wondered if he'd let her get lost there for a few hours. She looked away, desperate for something for her hands to do. She stood and grabbed two hammers from where they hung on the wall and changed the subject. Nails, hammers, and now to see if there's any scrap wood. The door opened, and the one voice Cynthia didn't want to hear until they'd fixed the barn sounded behind her. What do you need scrap wood for, Cynthia? Cynthia tried not to cringe as she turned to face Grant. Andrew cleared his throat. We need to... We need to fix a hole in Henry's stall. Cynthia cut him off. He kicked out a board between Mavis's pen and his. Her heart beat in her ears while she watched Grant mull over her lie. Finally, he shook his head 
raking his fingers through his thinning gray hair. I hate to move any of them, but if he's this bent on Mavis, I don't see any other choice. Switch him around so he's not near her. I bought all the cut wood when my neighbor passed. There's plenty to spare. It's behind the workshop. We'll take care of it. Cynthia hoped her voice sounded calmer than she felt. What if Grant asked to see the damage? What if he stopped by the barn before they finished fixing the pens? I'm heading out for the day, Grant said, and Cynthia hoped he was unaware of her pounding heart. Jane wants to visit the grandchildren, and I've put her off too long already. Will you be all right without me? We'll be fine, right, Andrew? She looked over at Andrew so she wouldn't need to keep looking at Grant. The softest smile she'd ever seen spread across his face. Don't worry about us. Cynthia has everything under control. I won't be back before you leave for the day, so I'll see you tomorrow. Cynthia nodded holding her breath as Grant turned and headed out the door. She counted 20 heartbeats before releasing her breath in a whoosh. Now we know where to get the wood. She looked back at Andrew, that soft smile still on his face. Why did you lie for me? She opened her mouth, but her throat went tight and her mouth dry. A strangled hum was all she managed. Sorry. Andrew's face fell, and he grabbed the back of his neck. You don't need to tell me, just thanks. I thought I'd lost my job there for a moment. Cynthia nodded and swallowed, her throat still too tight to speak. And because she didn't know what else to do, she led them out of the workshop. They dropped the tools and nails off at the barn before Cynthia led them back to get the wood. Grant's neighbor must have been planning to build another building before he died. Cynthia wished they could build proper stalls. But if they did, Grant would know something more than a broken board happened. He'd likely fire Andrew, and Cynthia wasn't having that. Yes, she and Andrew weren't on the best of terms at the moment. Tension permeated everything they were doing. But it was her fault, not Andrew's. Why hadn't she answered him? It wasn't a big deal. They were friends, and friends watched out for each other. At least, she thought they were friends. Can I ask you something? She kept her eyes down on the wood plank they carried. Sure. Are we friends? Andrew didn't answer for a long time, and Cynthia tried to ignore the disappointment that filled her chest. She should have known better. They set the plank down on top of the rest of the pieces they'd carried to the barn. I want to be friends. It took two heartbeats for Cynthia to process what Andrew had said. I thought we were friends. She chanced a glance at him, missing his soft smile from before. That was why I liked Grant. Friends look out for each other. Andrew reached for her, linking their hands and sending a shiver down her back. I'm sorry. We are friends. I just didn't think someone as competent as you would want to be friends with someone like me. Cynthia gripped his hand before he could let her go. You're too hard on yourself. He shrugged, but that soft smile pulled on his lips again and Cynthia's chest warmed. Let's go get another set of boards. He held onto her hand as he turned, and fell face first over the stack of wood, pulling Cynthia down to the ground with him. Sorry! Andrew pushed up from the woodpile, only to lose his balance and crash to the ground. Again. The pile scattered beneath him, one plank smacking Cynthia's shoulder. Pain shot through her, and she curled in on herself. She really needed to keep Andrew away from things like precariously stacked piles of wood, if for no other reason than her personal safety. I'm sorry. Andrew groaned again and swore under his breath. Cynthia turned to where Andrew laid sprawled out on the ground. She sighed. A part of her wanted to be mad at him, but... 
the dejected look on his face cut through her anger. Yes, her shoulder stung, but probably not as sharply as Andrew's embarrassment. It's all right. She shifted away from the wood before standing. Andrew stayed sprawled on the ground, staring up at the blue sky above them. Really? It's all right. She moved to him and held out her hand. It happens. More to me than anyone. Cynthia frowned at his forlorn face. This was getting ridiculous. So he embodied chaos. That didn't mean he needed to mope over it. Besides, he said they were friends. And friends pulled each other out of their slumps. Enough! She reached down and grabbed his wrist, yanking to pull him to a sitting position. Andrew Spurgle, I refuse to sit here and let you wallow in self-pity. Your life is what it is, and amazingly enough, people like you for you, even if you bring a bit of disorder into the world. He shook his head, his gaze now fixed on the ground. That's exactly why people don't like me. I like you. Cynthia rested her fists on her hips. Doesn't that count for something? Andrew looked up at her, his eyes tracing from her black hair down to her brown boots. Cynthia's body buzzed as his eyes took her in, that soft smile tugging on his lips. It does. His whisper sent heat coursing through her body, and Cynthia swallowed hard against it. Well, good. She forced her eyes away from him, trying to calm her soaring heartbeat. Let's get the rest of the wood. Andrew stood and nodded. She chanced a glance at him and noticed that soft smile had graced his lips again. Cynthia pulled her eyes away. It was one thing to be his friend, but she realized her heart was pushing past friends with Andrew. That was a recipe for her own kind of chaos. It was the same chaos that drove her half a day's journey from home. What else was she supposed to do? She had summoned the courage to tell the man she'd been with for months that she loved him, and he'd not only told her she was crazy, but spread the rumor through the entire town that she'd been unfaithful. Best just be Andrew's friend, until she knew if he was interested in her that way or not. Unless he made the first move, Cynthia would play it safe. Part 2. Andrew They sat to the last of the wood down near the barn, and Andrew swallowed hard as Cynthia smiled at him. He had to be reading her wrong, but the way her cheeks blossomed pink every time she caught him staring had built a strange emotion in his chest. Hope. Well, there's no putting this off now. Cynthia turned to the barn, her black braid swinging against her back. Are you ready? You tell me what to do. I'll try not to make a bigger mess. She rolled her gold eyes at him, but bit her lip as she grinned. Andrew rubbed the back of his neck, trying to think of something, anything to say that might sweep her off her feet. He wanted her to see him as more than a buffoon. Most people knew he was a buffoon, but he yearned for Cynthia to see him as something more, something better. You're ridiculous. She grabbed the barn door. Let's get started. He followed her into the barn and groaned at the mess he'd made. At least the animals were all back on the ground but the debris from the pens looked even worse now that the pegasuses and griffins had been walking and lying on it. We've got this. Cynthia patted his arm and his skin tingled for a brief second. Let's start with the pegasus's side. They're more flighty than the griffins. He knew that all too well now. I can move the debris off to the side if you can help get the pegasuses out of the way. It's probably best that I give them some space. At least Henry and Mavis. She bumped his shoulder with hers, leaning into him. Andrew summoned some courage and shifted to wrap his arm around her. 
agonizing over if it was the right move. Then his arm hit feathers. Hello, Sandy. He sighed and settled for scratching the griffin's head. Sorry about all this. Sandy pushed into his hand and stepped between him and Cynthia. Don't worry, girl. Andrew and I are going to put everything right. Cynthia wrapped her arm around Sandy's neck, her fingers brushing against his. He swallowed, moving to take her hand, but she shifted to secure Sandy in a halter. Andrew pushed down the disappointment and stepped back so Cynthia could begin securing animals and started in on clearing the debris. There would be other chances to hold her hand. At least, he hoped there would be. There was enough wood to build full stalls for them. He was glad that that had gone right. Cynthia talked all the time about how the animals needed real stalls, and now she could build what they needed, just as soon as he got this mess cleared up. The first plank of wood he grabbed gave him a splinter. Great. Please, Motherland, don't let it be a sign. Despite his initial concern, the steady movement of clearing debris calmed his mind. The cacophony that always played in his head muffled a small amount as he focused on picking up the scattered boards of wood. Sweat dripped down his back as he picked up his pace. His speed, while soothing, caused his shirt to catch on the jagged edge of a board. Andrew huffed at the sound of fabric tearing. He hated mending clothes. His fingers always ended up with more holes in them than the item he was sewing. Hoping to cut down on the bleeding he'd be doing tonight, Andrew pulled his shirt over his head. He froze at the small sound of Cynthia's gasp. Fearing she'd hurt herself, he spun to find her staring at him. Her face was as red as the berries he'd been eating for breakfast, her eyes wide, her mouth agape. Are you all right? His own face heated. Taking a shirt off was a bad idea. He'd made her uncomfortable, embarrassed her and now himself. He was a fool. Why had he thought there was anything there? Obviously there wasn't. Black blocked out all but a thin band of gold in her beautiful eyes as she stared back at him. After an excruciating moment, she nodded. Sorry! She looked down and some of the color drained from her face. You're doing a good job. Once you get that last corner cleared up, we'll be ready to build the stalls. Right. Andrew frowned as Cynthia looked everywhere but at him. He was already embarrassed beyond his norm. Why stop now? I can put my shirt back on. No! Cynthia's eyes shot up to look at him. Her face flooded with her blush, deeper than it had been before. I mean, you don't have to. I I know it's hot work. If you need it off, it's, it's fine. Maybe he hadn't been reading things wrong. He'd be risking making a fool of himself, but he'd been doing that all day, all month, if he was honest. There was nothing left to lose, and Cynthia to gain. Andrew determined to play all in for a chance with the beautiful stable hand in front of him. He smiled. Well, tell me if it bothers you, all right? Cynthia bit her lip as her blush deepened and nodded. Clearing the debris gained a new purpose as Andrew worked, taking the time to arrange the wood into piles of what he thought was still usable and what needed to end up behind Grant's workshop. He only tripped twice and ended up with three more splinters. Andrew didn't notice it all that much, at least not with Cynthia glancing at him every few minutes, a shy smile gracing her pretty mouth. This is excellent! She came up behind him as he finished sorting the last of the debris. Andrew wiped his brow on the back of his arm. You must be rubbing off on me. Another of her smiles rewarded him. Grant could pay him in her smiles, and Andrew wouldn't complain. Actually, that might be all he got paid in once he told Grant the truth. 
knowing the likelihood that he wouldn't see Cynthia every day after this, left a bitter taste in his mouth. He grabbed a hammer to distract him from his gloomy thoughts, but his hand didn't cooperate as he dropped it on top of the pile of mostly usable pieces. At least it wasn't my foot. Andrew huffed and picked up the hammer, embarrassment burning hot in his gut. But he was playing all in for a chance with Cynthia, and that meant pushing off the embarrassment and mishaps. Cynthia slipped her hand around his left bicep, and Andrew stopped breathing as his skin exploded with the same tingling he'd previewed earlier. This had to be what it would feel like to pick up the flame from a candle. Touching raw light had to feel like Cynthia touching his skin. I'm glad it didn't hit your foot. I don't want to sacrifice my entire letter to heal you multiple times. Your letter? Andrew silently cursed at how his voice had come out so small. I tore the corner off a letter to my parents to heal you before. Her fingers slid down the length of his arm before she let go of him. His ability to think returned, but Andrew would have given up the clarity of mind to keep her hand on his skin. He cleared his throat and thought back to what she'd said. Do your parents not live close by? They're about half a day south of here. Cynthia picked up her hammer, using it to point at several boards that had come through the chaos in decent shape. Let's start with Henry's pen in the back. Did this job bring you out here? Andrew helped her pick up the stack of boards. Sort of. Her voice went tight, and he kicked himself for opening up a touchy topic. What do we need to do for the stalls you want? He changed the subject. We can't build the stalls I want. We have to build the pens, just as they were. They set the boards down near the wall, and she turned to look at him with her hands on her hips. The exasperated look on her face should have left him feeling foolish, but this time it emboldened him. And why not? He mirrored her stance. Because Grant will know there was more damage than just a broken board in Henry's pen. She gestured around the barn. I have to tell him the truth anyway, Andrew shrugged. We might as well sweeten the deal for him by improving what we can. She stepped up to him and grabbed his arm. You can't tell Grant the truth! I lied so he wouldn't fire you! The fire she sent through his arm made it hard to think, but Andrew held on to his resolve with a death grip. I will not make you a liar, Cynthia, especially not for me. You deserve better than that. You are better than that. Don't worry. I've been fired before. It's not the greatest feeling, but I usually figure something out. Her panic stare softened in her eyes, pulling him closer. He might as well have been a harnessed griffin with Cynthia holding the lead. Until he smacked his forehead against hers. Sorry! Andrew grimaced as pain splintered along his skull. She laughed and rubbed her forehead as she looked up at him. You're set on this, then? We really don't have to tell him. I have to tell him. He reached for her, tucking a stray lock from her braid behind her ear. Build the stalls with me, Cynthia. Then if Grant fires me, at least I know you got the stalls you wanted. The fight in her eyes softened and her shoulders fell with a long sigh. All right, fine. If you're going to tell him what happened anyway, let's make sure that these stalls are as good as we can make them. It'll be a lot harder to see you if you don't work here. Harder to see me? He must have hit his head with more force than he thought. That, or he hit her head too hard and rattled her intelligence. If you wanted to see me, she bit her lip as she grinned, and her gold eyes stared up at him. I would. He barely heard his own voice over the rushing of blood in his ears. They stared at each other, Andrew's heart beating to the same rhythm as the dull waves of pain radiating across his forehead. All right. 
Cynthia looked over at where she'd tethered all the griffins and pegasuses. Let's get to it. We'll spin this in the best light so Grant won't fire you. How are you going to spin this in a good light? Andrew laughed. If she didn't stop saying things like this, he was going to fall head over heels for her. Hopefully, just figuratively, he'd hit his head enough today. You realized we could use some of the wood he bought for building stalls. Your technique for pulling down the pens was questionable, but the results are admirable. Cynthia said it so matter-of-factly, Andrew almost believed it himself. She was too good to be true. Show me what to do. He picked up a board. She didn't need to know right now he'd still tell Grant the truth of what happened. Right now, she could keep looking at him like he was worth the fight. And she did, for the rest of the afternoon and into the night as they built stalls together. By the time they finished, Andrew hoped maybe Cynthia was right and Grant wouldn't fire him. The oil lamp near the door cast long shadows through the barn as they led Sandy into her new stall. The other animals had already settled in. Andrew determined Cynthia needed her own barn full of griffins for how much the animals liked their new spaces. Sandy immediately climbed onto the platform in the center of her stall. Cynthia had built a perch for each animal. The new stalls took up more room than the pens had. It made maneuvering in the barn a little tight, but Andrew figured the griffins and pegasuses needed the space more than the human caretakers. Sandy squawked, turning around once before settling down on the platform and preening one of her wings. Cynthia jumped, grabbing onto the ledge and heaving herself up onto the platform. She barely fit against Sandy's side, but the griffin happily tucked Cynthia under her wing. I'll build you a big platform like this when I bring you home. She snuggled into the fur on Sandy's back. Bring her home. Andrew smiled up at Cynthia, cuddled against the massive griffin. Next month, I'll have enough to buy her. I've been saving every scrap to bring her home since I got the shed in my garden fixed up. That's why you bring her treats. Andrew rested his arms on the gate, only to have it swing out, then back, and smack him. He sighed and latched the gate closed before testing his weight against it again. At least it hadn't smacked Cynthia, too. The woman who taught me to look after griffins told me the fastest way to their hearts was through stone fruit. Once I finished building a place for Sandy at my house, I started bringing her preserved stone fruit every day. Since they're in season now, she gets fresh ones. When he'd asked about the fruit that morning, she'd avoided the topic, but now she smiled at him. Looking pleased, he'd asked. And when you buy her, she'll have all the stone fruit she wants. Andrew chuckled, then gave her a teasing grin. I can't believe you're going to take Sandy from me. Cynthia rolled her eyes at him. If you're nice to me, maybe I'll let you visit her. Heat flooded him as his heart doubled its beat. Andrew took a studying breath fighting his mind's attempt to spin out of control from her words. She'd been doing that all afternoon and evening, saying little things that twisted his chest and made him hope she might accept if he asked for more than friendship from her. But he still didn't know how to ask. I'll start putting the tools away. He spun, hoping to buy himself some time, then knocked over an empty nail bucket, Andrew scooped it up, along with both hammers, the saws, and two other empty buckets. Careful! Cynthia called as he stumbled out the door, not quite dropping all the items in his arms. The chilly night air cleared his mind, and he realized as he stepped out into the dark, he'd made a fool of himself again. He had no light. Andrew wasn't about to go back into the barn until he had a plan. He refused to let the regular chaos that followed him tirelessly, ruin his chance with Cynthia. Slow steps led him further down the well-worn path to the workshop. He didn't bother repositioning the buckets blocking his view, reasoning there was no point with the moon and stars as his only light. He would go slow and find a candle at the workshop. Everything would be fine. 
at least until a divot in the ground sent him sprawling, leaving his face pressed into the dirt. Who's there? Andrew groaned. Of course Grant would be out here. At least Andrew had his shirt back on. Grant was definitely not who he wanted to impress that way. Andrew pushed up to sitting, feeling the sting of a scrape on his wrist. Maybe it would help distract from the blow when Grant fired him. It's me, Grant. Didn't mean to spook you. He looked up and saw a small light a short way off, illuminating Grant's stout form. What are you still doing here? No sense in putting off the inevitable. I let Cynthia cover for me this morning. Henry did more than break a board. I made a mistake and caused all the animals to break down their pens. Cynthia and I have just finished building new stalls for them. Andrew waited for Grant to say it, to tell him not to come back tomorrow. But Grant was silent as he studied him. Andrew squirmed. The past employers who had raged at him were easier to handle than Grant's scrutinizing silence. I'll get these things put away. Andrew stooped to collect everything he dropped. He stacked the three buckets and put as many of the tools that would fit in the top one. The extra time it took rewarded him with a free hand and the ability to see where he was going. Maybe when he tripped again, he could catch himself. You'll need to be on time tomorrow. Grant handed Andrew the candlestick. Grant's words echoed three times in Andrew's mind before he comprehended them. Warmth flooded his chest and his throat constricted. He wasn't fired. He'd been so sure of it, sure that there was no coming back from this, that it would be time to move on and find someone else willing to pay him for a month or so before they fired him too. Without Cynthia's help, that's exactly what would have happened. Right. Andrew adjusted his grip on the candlestick, keeping the dripping wax from burning his hand. You should go look at what Cynthia did. The stalls are amazing, and she made some smart improvements to the barn. I don't doubt that. Grant cracked a grin. And you know that if you hurt Cynthia, I will fire you, right? Andrew's heart stuttered to a stop before picking back up with a speed that flooded his ears. Was this what it was like meeting a woman's father? He'd never had a woman willing to stick around him long enough to get that far. But he wanted to reassure Grant. Wanted to let him know he'd make the effort, both with Cynthia and on the farm. I'd fire me too, Andrew met Grant's stare. I knew you were a good pick. I'll stop in and assure Cynthia I'm not firing you. And then you make sure she gets home all right. Grant's smile shifted to a smirk. Just to the door. She can handle the rest of it without you. Andrew's jaw fell to his boots before he yanked it back up. What in Motherland's name was he supposed to say to that? He settled for a quick nod. Got it. Grant patted his shoulder before walking past him. Andrew didn't waste any time in making his way to the workshop and getting everything put away. By the time Andrew made it back to the barn, Grant was on his way out. Thanks for this. Andrew handed him back the candle. You're welcome. And you were right. Cynthia knows what she's doing. Those stalls will be the talk of the farmers once I've shown them off to everyone. She's something special. Andrew looked past Grant to the barn. He wasn't sure which was more nerve-wracking, telling Grant the truth a few minutes ago, or knowing he was about to ask Cynthia if he could walk her home. You've got this. We'll see you tomorrow. Grant patted his shoulder again before heading into the dark. Andrew took a moment, trying to decide how to broach the subject of walking Cynthia home. He didn't think she'd oppose the idea, but he'd been nothing but a buffoon the entire day. Frankly, the whole month he'd worked with her. And he just wanted to be normal for one minute with her. Why are you out here? It's so cold, 
Andrew jumped at Cynthia's voice as she joined him in the cold night air. I was about to come in. He smiled as she stepped against him. He could do this. Slowly, he shifted his arm, sliding it up her back so no griffins could interfere, until it rested on her shoulders. Cynthia went still for a heart-stopping moment before curling into him, and Andrew's heart shuddered back to life. Emboldened, he rested his head against her hair to whisper in her ear. May I walk you home? He felt her sharp intake of breath, and he held his own as he waited for an answer. Grant told me I could take Sandy home today, and tomorrow pay him what I have for her. She tilted her head towards him, bringing their lips dangerously close. Would you like us to fly you home? Then I won't know you made it home all right. Andrew pulled her closer, shifting so that their foreheads could rest against each other. Let's get Sandy settled in, and I'll walk home. You could sleep in the shed with Sandy. She smirked at him, teasing shining in her gold eyes. Tempting. He grinned and tucked a loose strand of hair behind her ear. So tempting. Andrew... Her tongue darted out, wetting her lips. Enthralled by the action, Andrew almost forgot to respond. Cynthia? If you're going to kiss me, please don't smack my head again. He laughed, relief washing through him. He'd not read her wrong after all. You're fine if I kiss you then. If you don't, I might lose my mind. Her hands tightened on his shirt, pulling him closer. I lose enough stuff for the two of us. Andrew wrapped his arms around her, bringing his lips to hers in a slow slide as she melted against him. And the noise in his head went silent, replaced by Cynthia's quiet sigh as he kissed her under the stars. This concludes Love and a Bit of Disorder by Elaine Canyon. Copyright 2023 by Elaine Canyon. Read by the author. For more works by Elaine Canyon, visit her website, elainecanyon.com.